At the end of November last year, I made a video called Jank Logic, the Military Industrial Complex, where I argued that Jank, as usual, was making stuff up. This time about foreign policy. Jank tried to explain American foreign policy towards Iran by essentially saying military industrial complex want money. The largest factor is the money, Lebowski. So defense contractors want a war with Iran because they're not a nuclear country and we know it because we were in a peace deal with them and took all the uranium out of their country. And we have intelligence showing that they have not developed nuclear capabilities. So if you start a war with Russia or China, it might cause World War III and end us all. And defense contractors are like, I want to make money, but you know, my family lives in LA or New York or DC. I don't want them to die. So let's not go pick on Russia or China. We could do proxy wars and stuff, still make a lot of cash through Ukraine. But Iran, oh, that's a perfect target. Four times as large as Iraq, they make four times as much profit. As I argued in that video, Cenk was either ignorant of or conveniently ignoring evidence against his narrative. The link to that video is in the description box below, just in case you want to watch it. But it's by no means necessary for understanding this video. Here, I want to discuss another part of Cenk's idiotic rant, where he talked about oil prices. By the way, also, oil companies, because instability in the Middle East, causes oil prices to spike and it it is a it's an absolute epic disaster for the rest of us our kids are going to go die there let alone the hundreds of thousands of civilians on all sides that are going to die there oil prices are going to spike gas prices inflation everything is going to be a nightmare but cable news will not tell you that the people causing that nightmare are their beloved honored guests that they have brought on and not told you that they're secretly trying to start a war so they can get richer because they work for defense contractors. Of course, oil companies are part of the cabal of villains causing all the problems in politics, according to people like Cenk Uger. Wouldn't life be so much easier if we could reduce all the problems in the world to the machinations of a set of nefarious schemers trying to line their pockets? And it's not that oil companies or defense contractors are above scrutiny, or that they don't try to influence politics. No, it's that once again, Jank has greatly oversimplified things. So, Jank says that oil companies are all for war with Iran, because that will make oil prices spike, which will make them more money. Now, there is a nugget of truth in there. Oil companies, like pretty much all companies, want to increase their profits. What Jank doesn't seem to understand is that higher prices don't necessarily translate to higher profits. Changing prices isn't a one-way street. Consumers change their behavior in response to them, which in turn can affect the company's profits. All things being equal, a change in price changes quantity demanded. Lower prices lead to more quantity demanded, and higher prices lead to less quantity demanded. If you want people to consume less of something, you make it more expensive. If you want people to consume more of something, you make it less expensive. Sometimes lowering prices can actually increase profit because it increases sales and the company makes more money overall. This is exactly the logic employed by Sam's Club, owned by the evil Walmart, lowering the price of their hot dog and soda combo to $1.38. They're trying to compete with Costco's famous $1.50 deal of the same sort. Sam's Club is not being generous in doing so. They're trying to have a better price loss leader so that they can win over customers from their chief competitor. We'll see if that works. Economists Ionassis, Evan Galitas, and Manisa Gunati, apologies for butchering those names, conducted experiments regarding consumer psychology and prices. As they write in the Harvard Business Review, when consumers saw that the price today was lower than it had been in the past, they were more likely to buy now, because the current price seemed like a good deal. Similarly, when consumers saw the price today was higher than it had been in the past, they were less likely to buy now, because the current price seemed like a bad deal. For example, all else being equal, if a consumer sees that a product currently prices at $1,000 was $2,000 last week, they're likely to buy now, since the current price is much more appealing than the previous price. Conversely, if they see that the same product was $50 last week, they're likely to hold off on purchasing, since the current price is less appealing than the previous price. This isn't some novel concept. Policymakers have known this for years and have put it to use. A big reason why rates of smoking in the United States have declined is because cigarettes have gotten more expensive. The thing is, it doesn't cost that much to grow tobacco or roll cigarettes. 
especially in mass quantities. No, the big reason why cigarettes are so much more expensive than they used to be is because they're taxed like crazy. According to a Vietnamese study, there's a direct correlation between higher prices and reduced rates of smoking among young adults. As the authors wrote, using regression analysis, we found that a 1% increase in the real cigarette price reduces the probability of cigarette smoking by males by 0.08 percentage points, equivalent to the price elasticity of smoking prevalence at negative 0.26. When the cigarette price increased by 10%, the cigarette smoking prevalence among men decreased from 30.7% to 29.9%, and the number of male smokers declined by 270,000. Higher cigarette prices also reduced tobacco consumption expenditure among households. Quitting cigarettes is hard. Believe me, I know. I used to smoke two packs a day and it took me forever to quit, but I've saved a lot of money since then. I honestly don't know how people can even afford to smoke these days. But cigarettes are just a vice. Don't people have to buy oil? Surely it's an inelastic product, meaning that people will buy oil irrespective of what the price is. Well, oil is extremely important to the functioning of our economy, but it's not entirely inelastic. Consumers can change their behavior in response to higher oil prices, and they do. People are less likely to travel when gas is expensive, as it makes driving more costly. Given that oil is also a major component in jet fuel, people are less likely to fly as well. They're also more likely to use things like public transportation or carpool, or seek alternatives to driving. But perhaps most importantly, it changes what they drive. According to a 2010 study published by the American Economic Association, increases in gas prices led to consumers purchasing more fuel-efficient vehicles. This largely meant that consumers purchased fewer American-made SUVs and switched over to Japanese sedans. As the organization Resources for the Future wrote in a summary of the study, when gasoline prices increase, the amount a consumer is willing to pay for more fuel-efficient vehicles should increase. In fact, there is evidence that when gasoline prices increase, demand for less fuel-efficient vehicles falls, as consumers demand higher fuel economy to reduce the cost of driving. This increased demand for more fuel-efficient vehicles will increase their prices and will induce vehicle manufacturers to increase their supply of vehicles with higher fuel efficiency, which results in an overall increase in a fleet fuel economy. For example, between 2002 and 2007, gasoline prices increased by 80%, from $1.75 a gallon to $3.16, and consumers shifted away from U.S. manufacturers who were producing less fuel-efficient vehicles than their more efficient Japanese counterparts. The increase in gasoline price during that time can actually explain almost half of the decline in market share of U.S. manufacturers. Given the relatively low average fuel efficiency of U.S. manufactured vehicles at the time, back in 2016, when oil was incredibly cheap, The Economist expressed concern about the low price precisely because it would disincentivize the search for alternatives to oil. Cheap oil has a green lining, as it drags down the global price of natural gas, which crowds out coal, a dirtier fuel. But in the long run, cheap fossil fuels reduce the incentive to act on climate change. When oil prices are higher... People tend to economize more so that they don't spend nearly as much of their budget on energy. Hence, consumers switching from American gas guzzlers to more fuel-efficient Japanese models. Maybe it's those scheming Japanese that are raising tensions between the U.S. and Iran. Hoping to provoke a war so that oil prices will skyrocket, causing consumers to once again flock to their vehicles. All joking aside, there is a point to be made here about corporations having divergent interests. A critic watching this video might point out that while increased prices on cigarettes and oil may have decreased demand slightly for those companies, they still turned enormous profits during those years. Therefore, my theory is incorrect. Well, the point is that they could have been even more profitable had their prices been at that sweet spot where they more than make up for their input costs, but not too high as to hurt quantity demanded. But that's ultimately a counterfactual that's impossible to prove. I think the more compelling case here is that there are lots of evil, greedy corporations that don't want increased oil prices. And by lots of, I mean most of them. There are plenty of oil-producing companies. And yes, many of them, especially the ones with names you would recognize, are incredibly profitable. But for all the companies that produce oil, think about all the companies for whom oil is a major input. Obviously, oil is refined to make gasoline, which still fuels most transport in the United States. Pretty much everything you buy was at some point shipped on a truck. Pretty much everything that goes into everything that you buy was also at some point on a truck. 
Increased fuel prices means that everything would be more expensive. Why on earth would other businesses, businesses that also have a great deal of clout in Washington, as Jenk loves to point out, want to raise their production and shipping costs? Gasoline is, of course, only one of the countless things oil is used to produce. In other words, higher oil costs would hurt large corporations by forcing them to raise their prices which would hurt demand for their products and services. Once again, Jenk only looks at one side of the ledger and conveniently ignores interests in the other direction. Finally, let's talk about why Joe Biden, the sitting president who is currently seeking re-election, has every reason not to want gas prices to go higher. As of now, it looks like we will have a rematch between Biden and Trump. If the election was held today, it looks as though Trump would win, at least according to the polls. Were I a betting man, I'd put my money on Biden losing. Now, a lot can happen in 11 months, but you better believe that higher gas prices would not help the incumbent. While gas prices don't perfectly correlate with presidential approval rating, there is definitely a relationship between the two. According to Kyle Kondik, an elections analyst, there is negative correlation between higher gas prices and presidential approval ratings. As Kondik writes, we calculated the correlation between real gas prices and presidential approval over this time period. That's from 1977 to 2022. We found that there was a negative 0.47 correlation between the two variables. This means that there was some association between higher gas prices and lower presidential approval, hence the negative correlation. But the correlation was not particularly strong. If you're Joe Biden, and you're currently losing to Donald Trump, and you're already getting dogged for inflation and high gas prices, why make things more difficult for yourself? Why take the risk of implementing policies that will likely increase gas prices when you're already trailing your likely opponent? Your likely opponent being someone who you seem to think is a grave threat to the country. The president doesn't control gas prices, of course. Oil is a globally traded commodity, and there are countless factors that go into shaping its market price. But actions from the executive branch of the United States do have some impact. Why would Joe Biden willingly alienate voters? Especially wishy-washy, low-information swing voters, who unfortunately do oftentimes decide elections, and who do look at things like gas prices as a proxy for the president's economic performance when you're in an election year. The president who was probably most hurt by high gas prices was Jimmy Carter, something Joe Biden knows all too well. Maybe Biden does want this because he's serving as donors. You're corrupt! You take donor money! He needs that money from the oil companies and the military-industrial complex to fund his campaign, doesn't he? After all, while there is slight correlation between gas prices and approval ratings, there is strong correlation between campaign spending and winning. Again, Biden takes money from other corporations. Corporations that probably don't want higher oil prices, but we'll ignore that for now. Lots of people, including me, have disputed that there's actually a causal relationship between campaign spending and winning elections. Go ahead and watch my video on that if you feel like it, but I'm not going to get into that now. The thing is, Jenk has even admitted that money doesn't matter that much in presidential campaigns because the election already receives so much free media attention. If money really did buy presidential elections, then we never would have had a President Trump because Hillary would have beaten him in 2016. So, in summary, oil companies do want higher profits, but that doesn't necessarily mean higher prices. Higher oil prices also hurt the bottom line of other greedy, politically well-connected companies, meaning they would have every reason to push politicians in the opposite direction. And finally, Joe Biden has every political reason not to want higher gas prices. I don't know what will happen between the United States and Iran, but I sincerely hope that there isn't a war as it would be catastrophic. But if we do go to war with Iran, which I don't think we will, it won't be because oil companies and defense contractors pushed us in that direction. Not that you would know that from watching Cenk Uygur. Mm -hmm.